Hi, and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about source documents and source data. More after the break. Monitors in particular often ask themselves at the beginning of their careers what needs to be documented by the trial site. The answer is pretty simple. Everything has to be documented in principle. Exceptions to the documentation requirement must be described in the study protocol if there are electronic records in a device itself, for example, in a pacemaker. The routine is most likely documented in the medical record anyway. However, they are often documented in a rather imprecise and difficult to understand manner. For example, the frequency of medication administration is often documented as a code. 0-0-1, for example, means that the patient has to take one tablet in the evening. However, within the framework of a study, the processes relevant to the study must also be documented, which of course means a considerable additional workload for the investigators, which they are usually not happy about. Don't get involved in long discussions. If you have asked the investigator two or three times to keep the source documents complete, and there is no improvement, you should document the problem in your monitoring report and report it to the project management. The typical data that should appear as source data in the source documents are the informed consent process, including date, time, patient's questions and answers if applicable, and the indication that the patient had sufficient time to think about it. The confirmation of participation in the clinical trial. The study number. Doctors like to simply write the name of the drug, such as aspirin study. This is not sufficient. The protocol code or the UDRATE-T number is suitable. Patient numbers, for example, both the screening number and the randomization numbers, if there are different numbers. Confirmation that the inclusion and exclusion criteria were met. The inclusion criteria should of course not only be available as confirmation, but should also be traceable using fixed data, such as age, sex, underlying disease, and others, whereas the exclusion criteria should not be available in the medical record, and therefore confirmation of the absence of the exclusion criteria is sufficient. In addition, the previous and concomitant diseases consisting of the medical history and the adverse events must be documented as source data in the most accurate way. Ensure that the beginning and end, intensity, and causal relationship between adverse event and investigational product are documented. The previous and concomitant medication must be documented one-to-one -one in the medical record. This means that you must be able to verify the start date, stop date, dose, and frequency of use. Don't let the investigator tell you that there is only one way to dose and everyone should know it. The changes in dosage as well as the reason must also be traceable. The dosage of a medication is not reduced or increased without reason, and this reason must be made transparent. The administration of the study medication must also be documented in the source documentation. When the administration was started, when it was stopped, the dosage and the kit number, if applicable, should be available. Interruptions in the administration must also be traceable. Compliance with the prescribed dosage calculated on the basis of the medication actually taken for a certain period in relation to the prescribed amount of medication for the same period must also be easy to find out. It would be best if the calculation of compliance is made directly in the medical record. Furthermore, the study-related examinations must be documented. The laboratory findings must be available including a timely assessment by an investigator, which has been signed and dated. Other findings, such as ECGs, spirometry, aerodynamics, ultrasound images, and others must also be evaluated, signed and dated. Care must be taken to ensure that ECGs, for example, are not printed on thermal paper. These fade with time and are therefore not readable during the entire archiving period. 
Such documents must therefore be photocopied and signed again. If the patient has to fill out questionnaires, the distribution, receipt, and the examination of the questionnaires must be documented. The source data must primarily be written in the source documents. From there, it is transferred to the CRS. This process is identical for paper and electronic CRS. The person transferring the data does not necessarily have to be the investigator, but must have been authorized by the principal investigator in the delegation log. If there is an exception that data should be documented directly in the CRF rather than in the source documents, then this should be mentioned in the protocol as part of the study design, according to paragraph 6.49 of the ICHGCP guideline. Otherwise, you must strictly assume that the CRF is not a source document. So much about the source documents and source data. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. See you soon!